Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 5.2, infinite series. So in this section, we're going to start learning about infinite series, which is something that really gets used a lot in uh, later on, if you ever study math for the rest of your life, right? Or in some uh, physics applications. It just happens um, just more often than you would think would happen, right? Um, so first of all, I'm just going to show you guys what you know, a series is, and uh, what we're going to be really concerned about uh, is uh, looking at whether or not a certain series converges or diverges, okay? And I'm going to define those terms too, okay? And then for the rest of the course, really just leveraging all of those things, right, to uh, solve some of the harder stuff uh, later on in the, um, later on in the semester, okay? Okay, so let me go ahead and start with the definition of an infinite series, yeah? So an infinite series looks like this, okay? It's basically the summation of a bunch of terms and those terms are sort of uh, defined by some sort of formula or some form of way, right? Um, essentially saying like each, each one of these A1s, A2s, A3, these numbers, right? Um, are uh, sort of determined by a formula of some sort. We're call gonna call that A of N, right? And the A of N tends to have sort of like a sequence. If you guys remember the, pre the previous section, right? There's a, a sequence that's maybe attached to it, right? Okay. Uh, so this is what is called an infinite series, right? And the thing that sort of gives it away is this thing up here. There's an infinity, right? Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, something else that I really want to sort of start hammering in, in particular, is uh, the um, these things down here, basically the beginning and end, okay? Uh, so let me first define the next thing, and I'll get into what I mean by those, like keeping an eye on those. Uh, we call the partial sum... We give it a specific value or we give it a specific letter. We call it S sub K, right? Um, and if you guys notice, right, it's the A1 plus A2 plus A3 dot, 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 up to a Kth value, okay? So just keep that in mind. So see how this one just keeps going. So this one just, the very top one, keeps going and going and going and going, right? But the partial sum stops at the Kth term, okay? Got it? So now let me go back to what I was saying before, right? That you should really keep an eye out on where things start and where things stop in particular. So this one starts n equal one and it goes off to infinity. This one goes from n equal one stops at k, right? There's gonna be, um, you'll see that in the, uh, you'll see this in the examples that I'm gonna be doing, um, that sometimes both of these values where they stop and where they start will change. So just keep an eye out uh, when those things sort of change around, okay? Okay, let me get to some more definitions here, okay? Um, the partial sums form a sequence. So if you grab a bunch of these, so basically the sum that stops at three, the sum that stops at four, the sum at, that stops at five, the sum that stops at 20, you have a sequence of values there, right? Uh, that those partial sums form that sequence S of K, okay? If the sequence uh, converges to a real number S, then we say that that infinite series converges. That means that our infinite series is getting closer and closer to a particular uh, value, right? Uh, we call that uh, the convergence of the series, and we essentially say that this, that's this right here. So a large portion of the next couple of weeks is going to be determining uh, if I give you a series, right, determining whether or not it does or does not converge, right? If a, uh, the sequence of partial sums diverges, aka if it does not converge, then we say this, the sequence diverges or the series diverges, sorry. Okay. So if it converges to a particular value, right? Uh, then we say that the series converges. If it does not converge, it diverges. That's it. Okay. Essentially saying, right, that uh, our sequence of partial sums, right, is getting closer and closer to a number or not getting closer and closer to a number. That's it. That is it. Okay. 
So let me show you guys what I'm talking about now, yeah? So I've got here a series that I want to determine whether or not it diverges or converges, okay? I'm gonna do it by uh, the first uh, five partial sums. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first find out the partial sums, the first five, see if we can find an equation for it. Let's see if we can find what's called a closed form, okay? And based off of that closed form, determine whether or not it does or does not converge. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and uh, do the partial sums first. So let me do S1 first, right? So S of one is gonna be one over one, whoops, one. One times one plus one, right, which is two. So this is one half. Let me move this down a little bit, S2. So S2 is gonna be the one half, right? plus one over two times three, because this is my formula for it, right? Which makes this one half plus one sixth. This is gonna be equal to two thirds, two thirds. Okay, if you do the common denominator right and all that jazz, okay? All right, let's keep going. S3, right, is going to be this one, the two thirds, plus one over three times four from the formula, right? So this is gonna be two thirds plus one twelfth, and this is three quarters, okay? Uh, S4 is gonna be my three quarters, which we just found, right? Plus one over four times five, so three quarters plus one twentieth. That is four fifths and so on and so on and so on. Okay. So I'm gonna highlight some values here. So for one, we got a half. For two, we got two thirds. For three, we got three fourths. Four, we got four fifths. So my, uh, S of N, I'm gonna N equal one to infinity, right? My sequence of partial sums, right? Is this one half plus, uh, whoops, not one half, not plus, one half, uh, two thirds, three fourths, four fifths, right? And we only computed the four fifths, but I think you can guess the rest, right? It'd be five sixths, six seventh, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so hopefully you guys are seeing this already, right? And hopefully you guys see, just by looking at the pattern of my sequence, right? You guys hopefully can, pull this out, it's gonna be n over uh, n plus one. You guys see that pattern, yeah? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna sort of do here is this. Suppose I wanted to find out if this thing either diverges or converges, right? So I wanna find out if this, whoa, to infinity, right, of my ANs, or one over N, N plus one, I wanna find out if this thing converges, right? And this is equivalent to the limit as N goes to, and I'm gonna not do N to infinity, I'm gonna do K to infinity of the sum, right, of N equal one, the K of one over N, N plus one. Right, this thing right here, right? This thing right here is essentially, this thing right here is essentially this list of stuff right here, which is essentially this right here. Okay, so then that is equivalent of saying, right? That the, 
So this is equal to, let me go ahead and just do this, limit as k goes to infinity, right, of k over k plus 1. Right. And if you guys remember from Calc 1, we had that argument where you can divide by the highest power that's there, right? This is the equivalent to limit k goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over k. Something else, hopefully, you guys remember that is 0, right? So then this thing right here, whoops, uh uh, no, no, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Right, so notice what we did. We used our pattern, right, for S of N, right? We used our pattern for S of N uh, to find some form of closed form for my equation, right? Uh, and then use that to find a pattern, uh, use that pattern to find an equation, and then take the limit of that equation to find the, the limit of our, or the sort of the summation, the, the, the the convergence of my series. So we have now, right, that the sum n equal one to infinity of one over n, n plus one is equal to one. So therefore, right, my series to infinity one over n, n plus one converges. And in particular, it converges to one. Okay, let me do one more example before I have you guys doing a um, uh, before I have you guys doing a um, a quick check. Okay, um, for this one, let's go ahead and start the same way. It says do the first five partial sums, right? So uh, I'm going to do s of one, right? So that's going to be one over one, one. Simple enough. S of two is going to be one plus one half. And if you do that right, three over two, S three, one, whoops, not one, three halves, plus the next term, well, let me actually write this right, three halves, plus the next term, which is gonna be one third, okay? Uh, this is equivalent to 11 over six. If you do the com uh, the common denominators right and you know add and subtract how you're supposed to, you should get 11 over six. Uh, S4 is gonna be the 11 over six plus, now I have to do one fourth, right? And if you do this right, 25 over 12, okay? Uh, S sub five. The 25 over 12 plus one fifth, right? And that is equal to 137 over 60 S6. I'm going to do the 137 over 60 plus one sixth. You guys hopefully see the pattern going on here. One 47 over 60, right? So my Sn, right? So I'm going to look at this. It's going to be 1, 3 halves, 11 sixths. You know, all these green numbers, right? If you take a look at that, right? My S of n, my sequence of partial sums from n equal 1 to infinity is equal to 1, 3 halves, 11 sixths, uh, whoops, 25 over 12, uh, 137 over 60, 147 over 60, and dot, dot, dot. Right. So now that we have um, a sequence of our partial sums, right? Usually, right, uh, at this point, like I did in the previous example, I tried to find a closed form. So equal to something, right? And the idea is, what is this something, right? Unfortunately, 
for this sequence or for this series in particular, there is no uh, there is no formula for the closed form of a partial of this partial sum. So let me write that down. to infinity of one over n. What I'm trying to say is this. In the previous example, we had a formula for all those question marks, right? And from there, we made a conclusion, right? Unfortunately for this particular sequence, that formula does not exist, okay? However, though, what I will do is this, uh, graphically, Okay, we, we can see this, that the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n is equal to infinity. So what we get to say is this, uh, n equal one to infinity of one over n diverges. Now, some of you guys are saying like, what do you mean by graphically, right? So. Uh, that's what I want to do now. Graphically, basically, you know, you guys, you guys are hopefully thinking that means you're able to graph this thing, right? So that is exactly what I'm going to do. If my computer ever, there we go. Uh, there we go. Let me move this over here. So I will eventually give you guys the uh, the link uh, for this. This is going to be at the very end of the. You be at the very end of the. Um, uh, of this section for you guys to use on a repeated basis, okay? So, this calculator that I that I prepared for everybody for this class is the sequence and partial sums calculator, okay? So, hopefully you guys see the g of x, right, is sort of like your uh, your terms, your your a sub n, right? And then the f of x is going to be the partial sum, right? And hopefully you guys see from below that, I give you guys a big, huge table that's got a bunch of these values, right? So, uh, and you can zoom in, zoom out, right? But what I want to do is I'm going to show you guys what I mean by, uh, so let me actually do a double screen here because there was a that result right there that we got that the sum from n equal one to infinity of one over n, it diverges. It doesn't get close to any value, right? And that's exactly what I want to sort of uh, show you guys here. I'm trying to develop this gut feeling for everybody uh, of whether, like when you take a look at a sequence, right? Uh, and you start looking at the points for them, uh, get that gut feeling of whether or not a sequence converges or diverges, right? So here's the uh, one over n. Uh, in this case, I had to do one over x because that's the only way that uh, Desmos uh, picks up um, the a sub n term, right? And then I sort of finagled it, made it work right, OK? Uh, if you guys take a look, the green points, right? These green points, uh, sorry, green, these red points, uh, they are the, the individual a sub n's. And then the blue points are the partial sums up to that value. So uh, this one right here is going to be the partial sum up to the 30th term. This one right here is going to be the partial sum up to the 11th term, right? This one right here is going to be the partial sum up to the uh, 15th term, OK? So now, what do I mean by all this other stuff right here? So I want you guys to look at this table that's here, right? And I have a table that goes all the way up to 20 at least, right? And then I start skipping by 10, right? And if you guys take a look, it just keeps growing. It doesn't stop growing. And I'm, and I'm looking at this blue f of x1 one, right? Uh, if you take a look, the numbers just keep growing and growing and growing and growing, right? And graphically, you guys can see sort of that it just sort of, the partial sums, they just sort of take off really, 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 really far out, right? And it doesn't stop. They just keep growing. I know the at least uh, uh, the calculator that I'm providing you guys stops at 100, but it doesn't stop. That 
those blue line, those blue dots, right? They keep growing and growing and growing, right? Whenever you see something that does that, odds are it's going to diverge, okay? So this is the graphical method of being able to solve divergence or convergence, right, graphically. Essentially, we can slap these points down on an xy plane and see whether the points themselves tend to a specific value or they just completely blow up, okay? So now, let me go back to this. So remember how I said this thing doesn't have a closed form, right? This is actually a pretty uh, important sequence. Uh, this is a pretty important series in math. It's called the harmonic series, okay? And the harmonic series is really interesting because each individual term, so the one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth, all of those terms, right? They go to zero, right? If you took at, if you take a look at each individual term, it goes to zero, right? But when you add them up, right, it diverges. It means it that uh, when you add this thing up it'll be infinity, right? Um, and the idea behind this, right, is so now you have a sequence of values, right, where each term in the sequence goes to zero, but the sum does not go to anything. It blows up. It's equal to infinity, right? Uh, it is a sequence that diverges, but it does so very, very, very slowly, right? Um, and it's sort of like a conundrum. It's one of those um, where, you know, you, uh, you saw one of these already, right? Um, you guys remember Gabriel's horn, right? Um, the shape of Gabriel's horn, right? Had a finite volume, right? But the, um, but the surface area for it, right? It was infinite. So that basically meant uh, you were able to paint it, right? Using a finite, uh, sorry. Uh, that this shape uh, held a finite number, a finite amount of liquid, right? But you'll never be able to completely paint it. That's the sort of the conundrum there, right? So there's uh, multiple ways of showing that this thing diverges. I'm gonna show you guys the most common one and the most sort of easiest one to uh, sort of grasp, right? So if you take a look at how the harmonic series goes, right? I'm gonna go ahead and write it out here, n equal one to infinity of one over n, right? I'm gonna just start writing out the terms, right? Uh, this is equal to one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth plus one sixth plus one seventh, one eighth, ninth, 10, 11, whoops, one over 11, ha, huh? plus one over, 12 plus one over 13 plus one over 14 plus dot, 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 dot. Okay, so here's the proof that most of everybody uh, likes. Let me write this one third a little nicer, one third. Okay, here's the proof that everybody uh, likes. It's the most uh, accessible to everybody, right? So I'm gonna start highlighting, I'm gonna try to group some of these terms. So this is gonna be one, right? plus one half, and I think I need to make this, oh no, that's fine. Actually, no, let me make it smaller, there we go. So let me do this again. So this is one plus one half, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna group these two together, right? And I want you guys to plug this into your calculator. This is something that is bigger than one half, okay? I'm gonna group one, two, three, four more terms. I want you guys to put this in a calculator. This right here is also bigger than one half. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna grab this plus, I think it's the next eight terms, greater than one half. So essentially saying that if we group you know, the next two, four, eight, 16, 32 terms, right? I'm always gonna be adding something bigger than a half, 
And if I keep doing that, obviously, if you just keep adding a half plus a half plus a half plus a, the halves are coming from associating bigger and bigger groups, but you're still adding a half, right? And this thing, this summation goes on to infinity, right? So if I keep adding halves plus halves plus halves, obviously it's gonna be going to infinity, okay? So that's the, the easiest uh, argument for why the harmonic series diverges, okay? So uh, what I want you guys to do now is um, go ahead, do this quick check. Okay, uh, both of these have a closed form in terms of the partial sum. So I want you guys to find uh, equations for the partial sums, right? And use those equations for the partial sums to prove either divergence or convergence. It's exactly the same as both the example, uh, example one and example two that I just did, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Um, each one of the partial sums that you guys are gonna figure out in um, in quick check uh, one, right? And the examples that I did, right? We can leverage a bunch of stuff <clears throat> um, uh, in the future to prove uh, convergence and converge uh, convergence and divergence, right? Um, we have these following properties, and this is why it's going to be pretty useful when we have, uh, to have these properties. They end up working the same as the limit arguments from Calc one. Okay, so suppose you had two uh, two series, right, a n and b n, and uh, suppose that both of those are convergent. Okay, then the following algebraic properties hold. The sum of the series converge, right? And the sum of both of the series is going to be sort of the sum of whatever they converge to, right? Suppose you had a value C that's multiplied by A sub N inside, right? Then you can pop out the C times, right? And if A sub N converges, it's just going to be C times whatever that value is. OK. So why is this helpful? Let me go ahead and go to this example. So this one is one of the examples that I did, and then one of the examples that is part of the group, uh, the quick checks that are um, uh, right above, uh, up above, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use those rules. Uh, my algebraic rules, right, let me put those up there, uh, state that the summations, I can split them up, right? So this is equivalent now, right, is the sum n equal 1 to infinity of 3 n n plus 1, right, plus the sum n equal 1 equal to infinity of one over two to the n, okay? And if you guys remember now, right, this one, the first one, has the three times. So I can grab that three and pop it out front. So it's gonna be three times the sum, n equal one to infinity of one over n, n plus one, plus the sum, whoa, n equal one to infinity. Your, your, your hand is gonna spasm every once in a while when you do the summation, just like it did for me just now, due to the n, okay? So we know that these both separately, these two right here, these two separately converge, right? So then that means the original summation, this one, must also converge. And more importantly, now we can get an answer for these, OK? So this first one is going to be 3 times we have the conversion for uh, the convergence of the first summation. That's going to be 1, right, plus uh, the uh, convergence of the second one, the one over two n, that's going to converge to one. So all of this is going to converge to four, right? So the idea here is both both parts converge, right? Therefore, right, the sum n equal one to infinity of three over n n plus one plus one over two to the n 
converges and it converges to four. Okay, so now I kind of want to steer people away from a specific thought that maybe some of you guys have gotten, right? Uh, let me scroll back up to our um, harmonic sequence or harmonic series here. So in this one, we got that there's a, we, we got a, a, our sequence of partial sums, our S of N, right? There was no formula for it and this one diverged, right? That's not to say that because we can't find a closed form for our uh, partial sums, right? That it's gonna automatically diverge. So let me give you an example, a very, a very, uh, I think, uh, informative example here. We're going to take this series right here. Okay. Uh, this is a decimal representation of pi. Okay. So if you guys take a look, right, the bottom does have, the bottom does have a pattern. It's going to be 10 to the n, right? But then the top, right, the three, one, four, one, five, nine, those are the decimals from pi, right? So this summation does converge to pi, right? But these blue values right here, right? They don't have a closed form. There is no equation that will give us the nth decimal value of pi. There is no equation, okay? Uh, and because there's no equation, right, we can't find a, there's no closed form. We can't predict what that numerator is gonna be uh, at an nth value, right? So there's no closed form for this, but the way that we wrote it down just now, it converges to the value pi. Okay, sometimes you will get some equations, some, sometimes you will get some series that don't have closed form. Sometimes you do, right? Just keep an eye out for it. Uh, for the rest of this, this chapter, right? We're gonna learn how to handle all of those, all mixes of those, okay? All right, uh, moving on, uh, I'm gonna get into uh, two, is it two? Yep, uh, I'm gonna get into two specific types of series. The first one is what we call the geometric series, okay? And then the other one that we're gonna do in a bit after a quick check is gonna be the telescoping series, okay? So let me first define a geometric series. And this is gonna be, this is gonna uh, look a little wonky for people, um, specifically if you're trying to find references for it in another textbook, okay? Um, this is how I learned it that anything that looks like this is what's called the geometric series, right? Our textbook gives us this. Okay, both of them produce the same thing. Both of them produce this. It's a plus a times r plus a times r squared, a times r cubed, so on and, on and so forth, right? It's just different ways of representing. And if you, uh, let me point this out again, right? That Notice how my ends, my series, starts at different values of n, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're uh, looking at these problems. Make sure you're, uh, you're referencing the very beginning correctly, right? And it's given by that n, okay? Now, uh, a geometric series looks like this. It's going to be an a plus a sub times r plus a times r uh, squared, a times r cubed. You just keep adding, okay? Now, here's the great result. If that R, whether it be positive or negative, right? Uh, if that if that R, if the absolute value of that R is less than one, you're guaranteed that your series is going to converge. So then that means this, which is equal to this, is gonna converge to this equation right here, A divided by one minus R, okay? And if the absolute value of R is bigger than or equal to one, then you're guaranteed that it's gonna diverge. That simple, okay? So the idea here, right, is that your R, whatever this R is, if it's less than one, right, if it's somewhere between negative one and one, um, you know it's gonna converge. It's got an explicit formula for its convergence. And if it doesn't, 
right? If it's uh, something bigger than positive one or something less than negative one, you automatically can assume it's gonna diverge, okay? So how the hell do we use this? I've got an example here. Okay, I'm gonna use a couple of my, um, of my summation, uh, the algebraic uh, results that we did right above to solve this out, okay? So, and actually, let me make this equal to zero. Make that correction in your own uh, notes as well. So that's my bad. Um, because our formula, let me go back up to our formula, says that the equation is equal to a divided by one minus r when n is equal to zero. Okay, so let me show you guys how that this works. I'm going to use my algebra rules, right? So this is going to be equal to uh, the sum n equals zero to infinity, right? I'm going to split this up over my five to the n, right? So it's going to be this uh, three n plus one over five n minus two n over five n, and that's completely valid, right? equal to. Now that I have it split up under a subtraction, I can split both of them up separately, right? So sum n equals zero to infinity of three n plus one over five n minus sum n equals zero to infinity of uh, two to the n over five to the n. Okay. Uh, on the first term, on this one, on the first summation, th there's a means to an end for this, and it's going to be the step that follows. I'm going to separate out a three from the top, okay? So I'm going to get this now, sum n equals zero to infinity of three times three uh, to the n over five to the n minus, whoa, sum n equals zero to infinity. Uh, let me draw that right. Zero to infinity of two to the n over five to the n. I'm gonna put that in parentheses to keep it that way. Okay, we're almost there. I'm gonna grab this last final result that I have, this one right here, right? And this is gonna be some pre-calc rules. Uh, those ends I can pop out. Whoa. Not in highlight, please. There we go. Okay, so sum n equal zero to infinity. Three times uh, three to the n divided by five to the n. That is three over five to the n minus the sum n equals zero to infinity of, I'm gonna do the same thing for that tail end, right? Uh, two over five to the end. Now, I can use my result from uh, the geometric series to show that both of these now converge, right? In particular, the very first one is going to be three divided by one minus three fifths, because that's my R, you guys realize that, right? And then here's my other R. So the first one is gonna to converge to this right here. Let me actually highlight these. This is gonna to converge to this, right? Minus, well, I need this convergence, right? And hopefully you guys uh, figure this out. One over one minus two fifths. And that's gonna be this convergence right here, okay? This ends up being equal to uh, 15 over two minus five over three. This all converges to 35 over six. This is our final answer. So this summation, this series converges to 35 over six. So that's how you use um, the geometric series to do some of this uh, convergence, okay? Uh, I got a couple of examples here. I want you guys to try them out. Um, make sure you sort of explain every step. This is, these, these geometric series ones tends to be a little bit more algebraic. So make sure you show every step, okay?
All right, let me move on to telescoping series now. Last one of all of them. It's the less interesting of them all. Uh, sometimes you get something telescoping that seems to be a little interesting, not too much though. Um, so let me first define what a, a telescoping series is. A telescoping series is any series, right? Where terms get canceled out, right? Terms that happen later start getting canceled out by something that came before. Is that, or the other way around, terms that uh, show up at the beginning of a sequence or a series, right, end up getting canceled out by a term that comes up later. Okay, that's what a telescoping series is, right? Um, so let me show you guys uh, one of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Okay, if you guys recall, this one ended up converging to one, right? This ends up being a telescoping series. And this is the, I'm gonna show you guys how this works out, okay? So what I'm gonna do is this thing right here, the one divided by n, n plus one, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that with partial fractions, okay? So then what I'm trying to do is this. So my partial fractions tell me that one over n, n plus one, right, is gonna be equal to some a over n plus some b over n plus one, okay? Therefore, a n plus one plus b n has to equal one. I'm gonna collect some terms here, a plus b times n plus a has to equal one, this is pretty simple. A is equal to one, so B is equal to negative one if you do out the work, right? Okay, but now why, why did I do this? Uh, that means, right, that this is equal to, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a one over N, N plus one is equal to one over N, right? plus a negative one over n plus one. So I can rewrite this series. I'm gonna go ahead and arrow this down here, right? So it's gonna be equal to the sum and equal, and let me make this correction again, uh, one to infinity, right? It's gonna be equal to one over n, right, minus one over n plus one. Okay, now we have a statement here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start writing out a couple of these terms, right? So at one, this is gonna be one over one, which is one, minus one half. And then it's going to be plus one half minus one third, plus one third minus one fourth, plus one fourth minus one fifth, plus one fifth minus one sixth, plus one over sixth minus one seventh, plus dot 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 dot, and it keeps going right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to highlight these, n equal one, n equal two, n equal three, n equal four, n equal five, dot, 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 right? Now, hopefully you guys see what's happening, right? There's a one negative a half that came from the n equal one, and there's gonna be a positive a half from the n equal two. And then from n equal two, there's a negative a third, and then there's a positive a third from n equal three, so on and so forth. So what ends up happening is that just stuff keeps canceling. Cancel, 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 all the way down. The one negative one over seven, that's gonna cancel later, okay? So if you take a look at this, right, you get to see that if I wanna do S of K, right? Well, let me not do S of K, S, S of N. The partial sum, the sequence, right, S of N, right, this is gonna end up being equal to, right, one minus one over 
n. n equal one to infinity, right? Because if you take a look, right, it's gonna be, it's gonna end up stopping here. Let's say, let's take the uh, seventh partial sum, right? It's gonna be one minus the seventh, right? So then therefore we have another formula here to prove this, right? So uh, the sum n equal one to infinity of one over n, n plus one, right? Is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity, right? Of the SNs, which is the limit n goes to infinity of one uh, minus one over n, right? You guys can see hopefully minus uh, this one over n, that ends up going to zero. This is equal to one, just how it should be because that's the answer I got from the very beginning. Just a different way of getting at the same thing, okay? Whew, that was some hard stuff. Okay, so Anything that does something like this, where something cancels out something later, right, is called a telescoping series. That's why they're not too interesting because they just end up being just a bunch of cancellation. That's it, okay? Cool. Uh, the last thing I wanna go ahead and impart you guys with is uh, that sequence and partial sums calculator, okay? Um, it is, uh, I'm, like I said, I want to develop, I want you all to develop um, the uh, sort of like the gut feeling of when you look at something, it's going to converge, it's going to diverge, all that stuff, right? And you guys are going to get better and better at it as, you know, the semester gets, uh, goes along. Um, one of the best ways to do it is uh, at least, right? Uh, if you've got a, a, a sequence or a series, right? Uh, start putting down the partial sums and the sequences on some sort of graphical representation, right? And that's what the Desmos thing is that I was showing you guys earlier. And that is this thing, okay? Um, so if you uh, hold up your phone to the screen, to that QR code, uh, that calculator should pop up for you, okay? Uh, you can go ahead and use this as much as you need to. Like I said, um, your intuition, your, your gut feeling for whether or not something's going to converge or diverge, right? Right now is in its infancy. You're going to get better and better as uh, the rest of the semester goes along. Okay, this is one of the tools that I hope you guys use sort of on a regular basis. Okay, uh, moreover, some of, some of the things that I'm going to ask you guys uh, in later sections, right, is going to ask you give me the graphical re representation and tell me if it does look to you like it's going to converge or diverge. Okay, and I sort of semi expect you guys to just grab snippets and throw it into your answers. Okay, uh, so use that as much as you can, okay? Uh, I believe that is it. Lecture questions come up next, okay? So um, if you guys have any problems with any of this stuff, uh, as always, uh, stop by my office hours. I have my Friday hours every day, um, or sorry, every week. Uh, stop by or just plainly shoot me an email. I've been pretty good at, at uh, answering back emails. Uh, so. Uh, you know, drop me a line, okay? Uh, besides that, I'm all done here. Happy studying.